Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with a video on fast routes to good cash in old school RuneScape. This isn't necessarily a video on low level money making methods, they're kind of low to med level money makers that if you put some time into some skills uh, and dedicate most of your time and resources there, you can unlock something that will be good for you throughout the rest of the game, or at least towards the med and high level part of the game. So this is really the strategy that I try to tell people uh, to go for when building a new account, because you don't want to have a bunch of low level money makers that can make you a little bit of money. You'd rather dedicate your time into one skill, one thing, so that you can have the best method that you're going to want to do going forward that can fund other skills, other things you're going to do, and also allow you to train stuff quicker and unlock other methods too. So it really just makes the game that much better. And my dog is pumped to go ahead and get on into this. Some of these are going to be easier to unlock some of them will be a bit harder really just go for which ones you think you can do based on how much time you're going to be able to put into a uh, early game money maker so let's get into it so for the first method i decided to do one that may be a bit more accessible than the others and that is high alking bracelets of ethereum that are charged the only thing you need to do this is a fire staff i have the gilded and glory for you know swag um a fire staff and probably about 250k cash just to make this method bearable if not you're gonna have to constantly be purchasing from the grand exchange and you can do that if you want if you want to make money before this i would say lava dragons or you know any dragon that you can kind of save spot is good because you'll get bones and hides and be able to sell that for money while getting levels so that's how i would do that if you want a very very easy route to the early game or through it um obviously the more money you have the better because you can uh, buy more of these so you don't have to keep buying but right here as you can see 4.38k then I buy a nature rune as well for the high elk and I'm also going to need a piece of ether ether is basically always the same price and nature runes are relatively the same I use one piece of ether on the bracelet and then I go ahead and high elk it and in total off of that I made myself 687 GP now that's just insta buying everything if you have enough cash you can actually uh, slow buy stuff um, per se with this as we just saw if you insta buy it, it buys for this price, 837 GP is what we'll note. It's 43K, 837. And if I sell it, it's 43, 615. So, you know, you can save yourself 220 GP, or I guess make yourself 220 GP every ALK if you can buy those for the lower price, which you can if you have enough money and you want to wait it out. So, say for instance here, I'll throw in an offer for 11 of these. It should buy relatively quickly. I'll go and get myself 11 nature runes as well. Those are already bought. And then I'm going to need 12 pieces of ether also. Now, the thing is, once you start buying more than one, you can't put the pieces of ether in one by one. You have to pick them out of the bank every single time. So it is a bit click intensive. So this is basically the method. You just open your bank, take one out, uh, put one in the bracelet, close the bank, and just continue to do that over and over until you have an entire inventory filled. And then you can high alchem. Um, I usually just do an entire inventory first because it's easier that way. I'm kind of in the groove. So yeah, 65 XP every time and you're making yourself probably, you know, 600 to 800 GP. Obviously prices vary depending on time. So for high alking bracelets of ether, the hourly GP rate, if you can alk them continuously, so it depends on how often you're buying them from the Grand Exchange. You know, if you're not buying them that often, you'll be pretty close to this. If you're buying them every five bracelets, you won't be making as much as this but honestly if you can only buy five or ten bracelets at a time you'll make enough to like double your cash deck in an hour or maybe even triple it and that's that's still good stuff so the hourly rate comes in at about 600k per hour that is up or down probably 200k could be as high as 800k or as low as 400k depending on the time and the prices at which you buy them so this method's also really nice because you get 45k magic xp per hour as well if you're alking them pretty continuously and that is you know Pretty decent at early levels. It'll really get you going in, in terms of magic. But yeah, this method obviously is one that is click intensive and I get that, but it is one of the better methods early game for both money and XP in my opinion. So I enjoy it a lot and uh, would recommend others do it as well. And the next place we are at is the Blast Furnace uh, down here in Keldegrim. To get here, you had to have started the Giant Dwarf quest. And in addition to that, a couple things that I would recommend um, that are going to be very helpful are the Ice Gloves and the Coal Bag. These, you have to kill the Ice Queen. You don't have to be doing any quests, but sometimes you get them while doing a quest. It may be part of it, so you might already have them. And the Coal Bag can be obtained through Motherlode Mine by getting 100 gold nuggets. So that takes a little bit of time, but, uh, you know, you got to invest some time to get to these Money makers, as I was saying. Uh, in addition to that, 60 smithing is advantageous, however, not needed. It'll save you some money, but at the end of the day, 
Uh, if you don't have it, not a big deal. So the ore we'll be focusing on is mithril. That is unlocked at 50 smithing, and that's pretty obtainable, I would say. So what you're going to need, basically, the reason that blast furnace is good is you're going to need half as much coal. So typically you would need four coal and one mithril ore. Here you only need two coal and one mithril ore to make a bar. Saves you money, and... Uh, makes you quicker too. So I throw on my ice gloves. Typically you will be wearing graceful. I am not right now because I just trying to look cool. So the way an inventory would probably go is you'd likely grab a stamina to make sure that your uh, energy is high. I'm already there. Grab an event of coal, fill that up into the coal bag, then maybe some mithril or more coal, depending on what you need. Personally, I already have some coal in here, so I can still make the bars, but you have to work at a two to one ratio. And then you can shift click your bag and deposit that coal. And then down here, if you have your ice gloves, you can instantly take out as soon as the bars are made. So we'll go deposit that. If this was your first inventory here, you wouldn't have made bars right there because you need a two to one ratio. So on this go around, I would have ended up doing it. But yeah, basically you just run two uh, inventories of coal for every one inventory of mithril ore. And you can basically run two at the same time um, with the coal bag. And that's why it's so helpful. So this is the method. And a lot of people do this for med game money because it gets you both smithing XP and money with the mithril bars. You make about 300 GP or so right now for every mithril bar you make. You make them pretty quick here. I mean, just going right by there. That's our second inventory. And once you end up getting in the groove, you end up being a little quicker than I am, of course, and you can make more money and get even more XP. So it's a pretty good time. And so for my testing at Blast Furnace, I was averaging about 2.8 thousand bars per hour, which seemed to average out about right. Um, um, obviously, you know, it could be a little faster, a little slower, depending on how well you get used to Blast Furnace, but that's about the rate. Um, as far as GP an hour goes, given that it's it's close to 700k, um, it would seem a little bit higher, but you gotta account for some supplies in the sense of, like, stamina potions and costs to keep paying to be there, stuff like that, so it comes down to, like, 700 to 800k, somewhere in there, uh, again, depending on how fast you're going, and the XP per hour I was finding was at about 100k, so all in all, you're making 700k GP an hour and getting 100k smithing XP per hour, so it's pretty good stuff, and it can get better later with Adamant and Rune as well. And so here we are at the third moneymaker that I would recommend for med levels, and that is Chinchampas. Now, don't rush it here. Uh, personally, I'm, like, very, very low on this account, but my other account will show what all can be done with this method. And basically, with box traps, you unlock red chins at 63. Uh, wouldn't mess around with regular chins at all. And probably wouldn't even touch red chins until maybe 70 Hunter. Early on, it's going to be really slow. Um, so the XP rates here will vary greatly depending on if you start as soon as you can get them. And if you end up going all the way to 99 with these methods. Because if you like making money, if you like getting XP, the more XP you get in these methods, the more money you make. So uh, obviously, you know, the higher your level, the more you'll catch, the more you'll make. That's how it works at the end of the day. And that's why these rates are going to vary so greatly at the end. So um, there's also a ton of different places to catch the red chins. We have right here in the Feldip Hills, there's a few different spots here. There's also a private lair for chinchampas if you complete the hard Western Diary. And in addition to that, late game Song of the Elf you can complete. But again, those are some of the kind of later unlocks, but it shows why these vary so much. And then also at 73, you have yourself Black Chins, which can be found out in the wilderness. And that is where my other account is at. So it just shows how much of a difference these methods can have. With 97 Hunter, I'm going to be placing six traps down out here in the wilderness while I have a bunch of chins around me. And this just shows the versatility of Chinchampas because you can go from having four traps set up to having six traps set up in the wilderness with better chins and then if you work in tick manipulation methods like the swamp tar method you can actually get your XP a little bit quicker and that really just explains why there's such a variance because as you saw there I placed that trap down a little quick um, basically it, like that just saves you some time here and there allows you to catch chins a little faster and that stuff can add up in the long term so with that said the rates will vary a lot but here we go. So after testing some Hunter on both accounts, these are the rates that I got and they seem to match up with, you know, kind of the general uh, consensus on this stuff since I'm at the highest and lowest level basically. I had pretty good uh, with the red chins and the really bad account basically. It came out to close to 50k XP per hour. It could be a little less depending on how low you come here. But honestly, that was with 67 Hunter. I would not even recommend coming here that low. So maybe wait till 70, something like that. And also, uh, I was getting... 50k XP an hour and 300k GP an hour doing the red chins without any tick manipulation, without, you know, a 
good spot to do them at with, without shooting any of them as they left. There are tons of things that you can do to improve your XP and GP per hour at Chins that I was not doing. And I was still making 300k GP an hour. So that's like, while also getting XP, it's pretty good. And then as far as black Chins, once you kind of reach the end game of Hunter, I was at 97 and just general experience there. Um, I can get about 150k uh, XP per hour on Hunter. You can probably get a little bit more. I'm just not the best out there and I don't shoot the chins enough. So um, with that, I make about 1.6 mil an hour uh, in regards to Black and Champa hunting. That of course is with really high uh, Hunter, but it can show you that you can basically range anywhere from 300k to darn close to 2 mil if you're probably doing it really efficiently. So just depends on uh, you know how you're doing it and how much work you've put into the skill itself. But the more work you put in, the more you will get paid. And so for the fourth moneymaker, it is, uh, I guess, the second skill, basically, of the video. Something that I can't summarize, again, entirely uh, in one nice little uh, graphic. I think I'm just going to have to throw up a bunch of little things on screen of just kind of what you can expect with different runes as far as runecrafting goes. Because if we look here at the list of where you unlock stuff, there's a moneymaker already unlocked at level 13, which is mud runes. However, there are a lot of ways that you can aid that to make more money. Something like Cosmics, Astro Astrals, those are both going to make you money. However, Cosmics, you can make a lot easier than you can make Astrals, because Astrals, you're going to have to have Lunar Diplomacy. Um, Lunar Diplomacy is kind of a, I guess, more of a med game quest, but if you want to go out of your way for it, it is something that you can get done, and it is going to greatly impact how much money you make throughout the rest of runecrafting, depending on which methods you choose, because uh, it unlocks a lot of spells, a lot of runes, just a lot of useful things overall for runecrafting, and basically... Uh, when, when it comes to runecrafting, it's choose your own moneymaker here. I mean, you can do mud runes, you can do cosmics, you can do natures, astrals, laws, literally deaths, wrath runes, or you can even AFK bloods for like 600k an hour. Like, it's it's basically everything you want. I'll throw a bunch of rates on screen, and you can choose wherever you want to go from there. Just know that there are different requirements for different ones, and that's why it's, it's very heavily personal based on what kind of runes you enjoy crafting. Because runecrafting, at least in my experience, is not a skill that I naturally enjoy doing, so you want to make sure that wherever you're going to camp, you can actually do that. Because, you know, you're going to be there for a while. Runecrafting isn't all too fast, but definitely is a way to make money, especially if you're trying to build kind of a med-level account out. And so for the fifth moneymaker, this is actually going to be combat-related, and this is yeah, not an entire skill, luckily enough. Uh, just one method, and that is getting a red spider eggs through making a, a combination of spiders and sardines through the uh, Tower of Life quest. After completion, you can go down below and make weird combinations of monsters, and if you have the already easy uh, task done, then you can actually have a, a cloak that can teleport you close by, and in addition to that, the loot that you get down there will be noted, which is uh, yeah, very helpful for this method. It allows you to stay down there longer and make more money, of course. Um, you would usually start by drinking a one dose of super strength and attack before an inventory. However, I am going to lower my stats, so I am closer to what I think people doing this method will be at. Um, from there, get yourself 14 uh, sardines and red spider eggs. We'll price check that in total and see how much we're going with. That is 11.5k. Teleport to the monastery. You can go ahead and recharge prayer if you need to. I do not. And then just run on over to the Tower of Life area that is over here. Go ahead and go down below. And then from there, we go to the southeast to one of these symbols of life. We activate it, and it will bring out a monster, hopefully, that we can kill. Yep, there we go. Nice little uh, spideen, I guess. Um, happy to kill this weird looking thing and I guess we'll go ahead and reactivate it before we pick up our spider eggs and yeah you basically rinse and repeat the whole process through your entire inventory of eggs I'll see how long this takes me and we'll uh, figure out what we can make hourly off of this so after testing with the lower levels after taking the cost of supplies out of the equation uh, basically as far as pure profit goes you end up with a total of close to 400k profit per hour a um, little bit over a little less depending on your levels of course and a uh, little tip is just to go ahead and spam through the space bar whenever you're killing these and also spawn a new one before you pick up old loot so doing those two things will help you uh, try to get more of them per hour but in total works out to 20 to 30k melee xp as well so a little bit of stat upgrades there if you need some xp for melee and a little bit of gp which brings me to the final part of the video, which I guess is just the lifestyle approach that I took to both kind of this account that I'm making right here that I have a whole series on and to my original uh, Old School RuneScape account. Basically, 
the lifestyle approach that I chose that kind of made me uh, passive money is Slayer uh, paired with Herb Farm Runs. Herb Farm Runs are not something I've done in a while because I think there are other better money makers once you get to the med and late game, but if you're kind of early to med game and you can pair it with Slayer, it is such a nice thing to be able to just go do a task, get done with the task, go do an herb run. The herb run's gonna make you probably 50 to 200k depending on what your herb lore is and what type of seeds you're running with. And your Slayer task if you're going to Konar, if you're going to maybe Wildy Slayer, if you're uh, into that, or wherever you go, you know, you'll probably get a passive 1 to 300k off your Slayer task, and then you go ahead and just go do a little quick herb run, and you're off to making another 50 to 150k. Pair those together, you're making money, you're getting some XP in both Slayer, Combat, Farming, the whole deal. It really is a great way to kind of play the game and just slowly work on your account if you don't want to go out of your way entirely just to get money right off the bat, I guess. Um, you can kind of work on them both at the same time, and that's something I would also recommend to people that want to try that out. Sadly, I can't give you like a, a run through on an herb run guide because like many other skills in this thing, there's just so much going on that, you know, if I tried to make a guide for every single skill we talk about, it's going to... It's going to be a problem. So, But with that said, that is going to be the end of this video. Um, just a nice little run through of money making methods, both that I would use now and ones that I've looked at, but maybe I just don't enjoy for some particular reason. But overall, I'm very happy with this video and hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to tell me or anything you want to see from me, you can let me know in a comment down below. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this as soon as I go live, make sure to hit that subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, see you, brother.